Hello, welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. Great to be back with you after a week away. We hope you enjoyed Jennifer's interview with author J. Henry Warren. And I want to remind you that his book, Made in America 2.0, is available here at the station. Well, we are finally getting back into the swing of things after our recent TV44 auction. And possibly you were with us on September 6th. And if so, then you know just what an exciting and fun day that was. It really was an incredible mm -hmm. blessing from God. I was able day. to pop in a couple times. I always love being around just the excitement and the, the family atmosphere. You see a lot of people that you know and you recognize from past years. So it really has become a family reunion of sorts. Lots and lots of fun. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But first, we'll take a look at the rest of our show. And let's look at our scripture of the day. Let's do that, starting with Proverbs 10, verse 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Very uh, applicable this time of year with we see all the corn stalks and the beans getting ready to be harvested. Some already have been. So specifically today, we are talking about the harvest regarding tomatoes. Coming up on today's show, we have heirloom tomatoes. What are they? How are they different? How do they taste? Zach Bowers will join us to give us quite the tomato lesson. <laughs> looking forward to that. Also on today's show, there is no excuse for you to be looking for something to do this weekend. We're going to tell you about three very important events, a women's conference, of which I understand you've been invited to, possibly. First one ever, Andy. so I might go. A parenting conference and a music concert all coming up this weekend. But first, we want to take a moment to look back at this year's TV44 auction. Literally hundreds of people converged on the TV44 grounds Saturday, September 6th for the annual TV44 auction. Just a few weeks before the auction, our organizers were actually concerned that donations were coming in slowly. They asked God for an increase. Well, increase he did. And by auction day, there were more donations than anyone could recall in recent years. Saturday morning, 9 a.m., the bidding began. Dan Sullivan again headed up the auctioneers, which included eight volunteer auctioneers keeping things moving. Furniture, trips, automobiles, you name it. It was auctioned, and in the end, what an incredible day of partnership. In addition to the auctioneers, more than 60 volunteers, of course, dozens and dozens of donors. And finally, at 6.15 that evening, the last auction item found its new owner. And check this out. The total this year, $74,000 raised to support the ministry of TV44. An incredible increase over last year. We are praising God here at TV44 and overwhelmingly thankful for your involvement. For those of you who already can't wait for next year's auction, mark your calendars. As always, it's the first Saturday after Labor Day. Something else that comes around year after year, the harvest. You might still be picking the bounty from your own garden. Well, did you grow any heirloom vegetables this year? Heirloom tomatoes have grown in popularity in recent years. And Zach is with Andy and Jennifer to examine a few varieties grown locally. Well, thank you, Mark. In today's Lost Creek Care Center food segment, we are exploring just that, heirloom tomatoes. Now, what is an heirloom tomato? It's generally considered to be a variety that has been passed down through several generations of a family because of its valued characteristics. But some experts say to be an heirloom tomato, the seeds must be at least 50 years old and others say 100 years old. Regardless, there are actually hundreds of types of heirloom tomatoes in existence today and we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at just six of them. And here with me now, a few of our um, normal, typical <laughs> food experimentees and they're going to participate with us today. I know Andy's, I a, we were doing fruit. Andy's a huge we are fan doing of fruit. tomatoes. This is definitely a vegetable. <laughs> it's I, good for you, that's all that matters. If it makes a difference, we have a tomato lover right here and a, what would you I like title? spaghetti sauce and pizza sauce. That's made with tomatoes. Salsa? Beyond that, not a Salsa? fan of tomatoes. That's, that's very true. Do you eat them like apples? She probably would. Um, Come on. I've got to tell you, though, right I'm now. not a fan of tomatoes either, not typically. But you're the expert, so you don't have to taste them, right? <laughs> but the first time that I tried an heirloom tomato, the, the flavor was so um, just very tasty, and it was um, just different than a regular tomato. It didn't so taste like a tomato. You're going to be, be a changed man today, I think, <laughs> sure. after this. <laughs> <laughs> but like we mentioned, we have six of these different tomatoes, and we're going to first see if they can guess them by the name, and then we'll bite into them. And uh, we do have Dan Beck's knives yeah. on set. I thought I was banned from these. <laughs> we're, we're, he he, is, he is at home watching you <laughs> right <really> now. Sharp. <laughs> so we're going to be careful with these. But first, Always let's get careful. off to our first tomato, which is actually the green zebra. Can you guess which one that would be? These both have stripes. That's true. <laughs> so you cut it open. <laughs> And yeah, you can, like Jennifer, you hold that. If you look closely, you can see almost like a stripe-like texture 
on this tomato, and that's what's going to, you'll see that with several of the tomatoes that have zebra in their name. Um, you can see the stripes there, but, and you cut it open. What does it look I like did. on the inside? It looks like a tomato. It's green. It looks like a green Fry tomato. Fry it up and Juicy? it might not taste like a tomato. You'd be good. Oh, we don't have a stove here. You're going to have to try it unfried. So go ahead and Can bite have, into it. we have any garlic? <laughs> Eat it as is. Tastes like a tomato. Mm, <laughs> Actually, it's refreshing. Wow. Different? It's not terrible. <laughs> That's a step up from where it we were at the beginning of the show. Coming from someone who doesn't, what, pizza sauce is the extent of your tomato. I'll take another bite. But don't get too full because we have five more to go. Mm. It does kind of taste like a fruit, the consistency. The next one, Candy's Old Yellow. The yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> you would be correct on this one. Go ahead and cut that open. Looks like a squash. All right. Be careful. Whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> oh. Hey, that's a little more fleshy. What yep. does that mean? And the texture is different on each of these variety of tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, look at the inside of that. That's 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 more Almost solid. It's like, like a melon in the middle. The kiwi. Almost, yeah. Give it a shot. I'm nervous. Mm. Yuck. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say yuck. Sorry. Very. <laughs> that has that has a different that is a different taste than I the, like green the green one. one. It has Green's a different winning taste. so far. We have. <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> we'll do two this time. Cavern black. The black one. You can see here, very dark. I didn't know there were black. And some of these are almost a purple, like, this is almost black, but some of them carry a purple tone to them. And then also the red zebra. Any ideas? <laughs> that? No, no, that one. This would be the red zebra. You okay. can see, again, by the stripes. It's just getting red. It's not completely it's, red yet. It's, a, it's a yellow orange. So go ahead and cut those two open. Okay. Ooh, this one is pretty. And he's just hacking at I the like tomato. That. This is awesome. very pretty. Here, you need to have it's a bite pretty. of this one. Okay. It is. It's a. It will taste pretty in your mouth. And I think that is one, the, one of the ones I actually tasted. It makes me feel like I'm not eating a tomato, which is a good feeling. Don't think you're eating a zebra. That's not a good idea. I don't even know if that's illegal. Mm. The good news that's is that's a very different taste than the other other tomatoes. And it comes on a little after you bite it. You have to savor mm -hmm. it. And so green is still my favorite. It's a softer, it's softer too. I mean, that softer consistency. But you can tell the difference between a regular tomato. Is that right, Andy? By color. By by color, of course. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to try this one next. This is the. Oh, I forgot about that. Which one is this called? That is the red zebra. It's a zebra. The red zebra. Thank you. And the reason we're bringing these to attention not only because of the great flavor well, and that? taste, but <laughs> heirloom tomatoes are something. Recently, there's been some liberties taken with what exactly defines an heirloom tomato. But a lot of the varieties of heirloom tomatoes are actually becoming extinct or in the last 40 to 50 years because of the popularity of your traditional red tomato that looks um, just very, very appealing commercially. Um, some of these heirloom varieties have been uh, really become extinct, extinct. And so there's family farms out there. We want to thank Burgust Farms um, because they are the ones who provide the tomatoes. But there are family farms out there that are continuing these varieties of these heirloom tomatoes. Again, the seed's 50 to 100 That's years old. That's incredible to me that they, they just keep repurposing. And even older God than created it, yeah. Right? yeah, and I've been told that you can take these seeds, lay them out, and, and um, dry them, and use them next year. You start your own, your heirloom. own heirloom there going you go. on there you with go. the tomatoes. And yeah. we'll try it next year. Maybe Andy will uh, soften up to the <laughs> tomato family. I'm not a very good gardener. We planted blueberry and strawberry plants, and they died. I think you're destined for the tomato. You think is that easier to Give grow? It a Andy, shot. Andy Lynch, tomato farmer. Oh, a whole farm. I've got <laughs> some land. <laughs> well, we do want to thank Burgust Farms and Grace and Abby back for growing these tomatoes. It's not unusual to find fields full of tomatoes right here no. in Putnam I mean, County. Yes. You know, Good. this weekend you can find a lot more than that. The Christian worship band, Unspoken, oh. is coming to the region. Mark is with mm. the organizers of the event right oh, now. Good. Well, thank you, Zach. You know, there are some folks in the village of Pandora who just love to see that village population double in size this coming Sunday as the Pandora Missionary Church hosts the Christian music group Unspoken in Concert. And we're joined now by one of the concert organizers, Joanna Gratz, as well as the lead pastor at Pandora Missionary Church, Mike Brown. Thanks for, for joining us today, guys. And first off, Joanna, obviously last year you guys brought in J.J. Heller, had a great turnout. I, I suppose I'd encourage you guys to bring in another big act this year f for concert. Absolutely. Um, with the success of J.J. Heller last year, we were just blown away um, just how our community came together and also just the outreach um, opportunity that we had with the concert. So we were excited to do another one this year. 
Um, and we were especially excited that Unspoken um, was willing to come to Pandora. Uh, since they are so current on the radio, their songs are played very, very often. And so we were excited that they're coming to our town. Yeah, uh, Unspoken, you probably heard Start a Fire, Who You Are, some of their hits. Pastor, how did you guys get in touch with Unspoken? Well, actually, Joanna worked with that. Um, and uh, we just contacted their folks. And they had a date open. And, and it all kind of worked out. Concert is 7 o'clock, Sunday the 21st. Joanna, what, what did you guys learn from last year's concert that's going to maybe help you guys out with this year's? Well, I think, you know, any kind, anytime that you do an experience like this, you, you learn a lot. And um, so we just, we learned, I guess, how to put an event of this size and this magnitude on and make it successful, but also um, just the approach and how to choose the band even. Um, last year with J.J. Heller, we, we chose her because we liked her music. This year we kind of had a more... Um, I guess you could say more of a broader strategy and <laughs> and how we chose that and we had several different bands that were options and and um, we just went with the ones that were the most popular that we heard on the radio and also the thing that we really liked about Unspoken was their story and the testimony that they share at their concert is incredible and just how the band came together and and it really um, the lead singer he was addicted to drugs at one point in his life and um, went on this missions trip kind of a self-made missions trip to the Dominican Republic and met Mike Gomez who ended up becoming one of the guitar players in the band and so had had those kinds of things not happened unspoken probably wouldn't be um, but it was just amazing to hear how God can take what seems like a hopeless situation like like addiction mm -hmm. and just totally redeem it um, to to just a redemptive story of, of his grace and his mercy and um, they're using that story to bring more glory and honor to God, and, and they're very popular, like I said, and, and it's just neat to see how they can reach the masses with their story and their music. So. Ab absolutely, and, and Pastor, I think one of the great things about Unspoken is they really appeal to a, a, a wide range of, of folks out there. Well, they do. That was one of the interesting things for me. We started playing a video during... Um, the time when we were receiving our offerings on Sunday morning. We've been doing that all summer long. And my father, who is going to be 81 this fall, was sitting there with some friends that he brought from his home church um, down south of Kenton. And he was like, I've got to be at that concert. And uh, he just had knee replacement mm -hmm. surgery about th three weeks ago. And yesterday we were talking, he's like, I need tickets for that. And I'm like, well, dad, are you gonna be out of the rehab facility? He's like, well, yeah, I get out Friday and I want tickets. <laughs> and he said, I, and I, I'm just gonna buy 10 and make sure that they bring a whole bunch of folks up about 70 miles mm -hmm. to see this concert. And so for it to have the kind of impact where my 16-year-old is really excited about being there, and my 81-year-old father is also excited. That's really strange. That doesn't happen, <laughs> and so we're thrilled. Yeah, you know, Pastor, you're relatively new to Pandora Missionary Church. Do you step into the situation and kind of be blown away that this small church in this small town is hosting these big concerts? You know what? I'm blown away about everything in this church. For one thing, we are out in the middle of nowhere, and yet, we have a concentration of young couples and young families like Joanna and her husband Dan, who are really focused on reaching people for Christ. Um, as we look at doing concerts like this, I see us just throwing the doors open. It isn't our goal to attract people from other churches. Our goal is to find, have people come and find a relationship with Christ for the very first time. And these are opportunities where people can invite their friends who may be very far from Christ and say, you know what, come check this out. And hopefully they will, will come and find a relationship with Christ there and they can either go back to their home churches with their friends, or if they don't have a church and they live in the area, they'll find out that we're a church that really cares about them. And I've just been blown away by the people that I come in contact with. I am inheriting such a healthy church, and I praise God for that. Finally, Joanna, how can folks get tickets? 
Well, tickets are available on our website, PandoraMissionaryChurch.org, or they are here in town at Big B Coffee and Tom Alt dealerships, Greg's Pharmacy in Bluffton, or also Coffee Amici in the George House Coffee House in Finley. All right, thank you very much, Joanna Gratz and Pastor Mike Brown from Pandora Missionary Church again. This Sunday, 7 p.m., Unspoken in Concert. That's so, something you do on Sunday. Jennifer's with a guest now. He's got some ideas for how you could fill your Friday and Saturday. Jennifer? Well, thank you, Mark. Well, a year ago, actually several years ago, someone gave me a parenting book called Shepherding Your Child's Heart by Dr. Ted Tripp and told me if you sit down and read this book, it's literally going to change the way you parent. It's going to change the way you look at your kids. And I have to tell you what, that is absolutely right. Well, here in the Lima region, not only do parents have the opportunity to read that great book, but a special opportunity is coming up this weekend to actually hear Dr. Tripp in person. He is coming to this area for a two-day conference. What an incredible opportunity for parents of all, of, of all ranges of life. Pastor Joe Wassing from Grace Community Church is here to talk about this conference that's coming up Friday and Saturday, Shepherding Your Child's Heart. Yeah, it's something that we have been in the planning uh, processes for 15 months or so. Uh, we want to help parents be equipped mm -hmm. from a biblical perspective of how to raise the next generation. Now there are parenting tips left and right. You can hear them <laughs> on the radio, you can find all kinds of different books. What makes Dr. Tripp's philosophies different? I think what makes them different and much more effective is one, the biblical basis, and secondly, not speaking to the behavior alone. Yeah, I was the drill sergeant dad for the mm -hmm. first four to six to eight years of my first son's life, and I was uh, directing his behavior without going towards the motivation of that behavior, which is always held mm -hmm. in the heart. Wow. And so Dr. Tripp certainly wants us to like model like good behavior and also uh, teach to that behavior, but with the better emphasis of getting to the root of the problem, mm -hmm. which is what's in the heart. Well, and that is so important, you just mentioned the root of the problem. And I think as parents, we can, we can look at the situation and we wanna fix it right then and yes. there, so we're dealing with the symptom. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the root, right. that's when the true fruit can happen. Right. Well, one of the things that I hate to do is weed a garden. I just absolutely dislike it. Because why? If you don't get to the full root yeah. of the weed, guess what pops up again? And if we look at it from a parenting perspective, if we don't get the full root pulled out, mm. one of the examples he uses is the fact that the old two-child uh, philosophy of one person, one of the children has a toy, and the other one grabs it. And what's the first thing that the parent does? Who had it first? Well, well if they're still fighting over it, both children are really sinning, aren't they? Because we're saying, okay, who was the quickest at the draw? Mm. Well, well, the person who had it first is still being selfish. Yes, the second one should not steal, and that's certainly true, but the first one also has heart issues, and that's where Dr. Tripp, again, is trying to get to. And so from the biblical perspective, knowing that out of the heart flows all mm. wellsprings of life, this is what we want to address. And I think it, when I read this book many, 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 many years ago, less gray hair, if you will, <laughs> It, it, it spoke to me very specifically. Yeah, and as I listen to you, I am so encouraged to think about the fact that literally in one and a half days, mm -hmm. a couple can come in right. and glean from this information right. that not only could change the weeks and months ahead mm -hmm. for them, but essentially could change generations. Exactly, and that's what, I often tell Sunday school class, or even if I'm preaching, is I am not living for the next generation. I'm living for the generation, three generations from now. Right. Why? And what I'm saying is, is hopefully I'm modeling and parenting my kids so that they will model and parent their kids so that they will, again, it's, it's written in Deuteronomy, right? That we should teach yeah. our children the ways of the Lord. And I think this is an excellent uh, way for us to go about it. So Joe, give us the specifics sure. on the date, the time, and how people can get signed up. First of all, how to sign up, go to Grace Lima. Dot com. GraceLima.com. It's on the home page. You can click and go away and, and, and register very quickly. You must have a PayPal account. If you don't have a PayPal account, please call the church. You can go to GraceLima.com and find out what those phone numbers are. That's the first thing. When is it? It's Friday from 7 to 9.30, Friday, September 19th, 
from 7 to 9.30, then Saturday morning from 8.30 to about noon. And how about kid parents who are saying, oh, I want to come, but I've got kids and I right. don't have any place to take them to? Child care is also provided. It is limited and there is a fee for child care, but again, you can pay for that online as well. And we really emphasize, try to have both parents come not just the mom because the mom will come home really excited and the dad will be going, I have no idea what you're talking about. So please try to have both come. And it is a gush of information. So just take it in bite-sized chunks. Wonderful, wonderful. I really encourage you to, to, to consider, not just consider, to go because, you know, God created you for, for your children and he created your family for a purpose and he knows what tools you need mm -hmm. to raise those children to be what God wants them to be for the generations to come. And this conference itself, I believe, could be a catalyst to help make sure that that happens. Well, I have to admit that I would love to go to this conference, but unfortunately I can't because before I even knew about it, I was already tapped as the speaker for a women's conference that's taking place the same weekend. And Andy is with the organizer of that conference to tell you a little bit more. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm with Tina Williams, organizer of the WOW Women's Conference coming to Columbus Grove this Saturday. Welcome to Faith and Friends here at the Thank studios. Thank you. It's good to have you here. This is the fourth season, fourth year for this event. Uh, just kind of tell us how it all got started. Well, one day the pastor's wife had a vision to have a women's conference in our church. And so we started to organize it and we've, this is our fourth year doing it. And we hope to have a big attendance this year since we have another local speaker coming. That's right. Someone we know very well, Jennifer Beck, will be the speaker sharing a story from her life and her daughter, Hannah, who's an amazing singer, a recording artist here from right here in Lima. She will be playing as well. And I tell you what, I don't, I don't know if you've seen either of them before, but they just play off each other so well. It's a really neat thing to have a daughter and a mom coming to share with, mm -hmm. with a bunch of moms. Good. That's good. That's what we want. What do you like about this event? What you getting together, to? getting together with everybody mm -hmm. and hearing the speakers, the music. If you don't get something from the speaker, you may get something from the music or vice versa and going away fulfilled. This is a free event. They do want you to register so you can give them a call. Uh, the numbers here, 419-622-3711 or the church phone, 419-659-2380. A couple different numbers there also. Uh, free event. Yes. Free food. Free food. Uh, what door more could prizes. you get? This is door prizes. <laughs> door prizes. I mean, you guys really try and do it up well, it seems We like. do. We do. We want everybody to go away with something. And I've really pushed for door prizes this year, and I've got several, several good ones. I'm not going to let the greatest one out. Oh. Jennifer knows what it is, but I'm not <laughs> telling anybody else. So you have, have to come to see. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's coming up <laughs> this Saturday, so you will want to go to check that out. Uh, it's going to be a great event. And it's for everyone, not just the ladies within the church. You want surrounding communities right. to come. It is right. open and they'll feel welcome, I would right. imagine. Right, they will feel welcome, yes. They'll go into the basement first. They'll register. They'll have a light breakfast. Then at 9 o'clock, we'll go up into the sanctuary, have a prayer, and then start with the event. Um, there is a skit that will be performed by some of the St. John ladies performers. So you won't pick people out of the audience no, and put no, them on the spot. No. Okay. <laughs> that's but good. maybe that's a good idea. We ought to try that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for anyone Impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not for guys, so I can't come. You could if you like. Oh, really? Yeah, if you want to come and see. I've ever been invited to a women's conference. You, you're not excluded. <laughs> well, thank you. It is for everybody, and we certainly hope you will check it out again. You can call just so they can get an idea for the food. Is there mm -hmm. going to be lunch as well at the There'll end of the day? There'll be a hot lunch served at the end of the day, okay. yes. So they don't want to run out. Uh, give them a call for that. Thank you for joining us. We hope it's a great event. Thank you, and we'll see you on September 20th. All right, September 20th, coming up this Saturday, 8 o'clock registration, 8.30, it all gets started, so check that out. Uh, so we are moving over to Zach. He's done with tomatoes, and now he is taking a look at what it means to be face-to-face -face with God. Well, thank you, Andy. Coming up in the next week, Bill Harris introduces the third part in his four-week series based on 1 Chronicles 16. Ask yourself this question. Do you spend more time doing things for the Lord or spending time with the Lord? While both sides are important in the Christian life, one certainly outweighs the other. All right, Bill. Well, we appreciate you coming back to visit us one more time. We're talking about a new series you have, and uh, we're going to break it down specifically. Mm -hmm. But first, the series itself is based off of 1 Chronicles. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. It's 1 Chronicles chapter 16, uh, verse 11. 
And uh, briefly, it deals with uh, David and the people of Israel bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel after many, many years. And that is representative or symbolic of God's presence coming back. Mm -hmm. And so in the midst of that happening, songs break out and, and, and the like. And then comes that command to seek the huh. Lord and his strength and yearn for and seek his face and to be in his presence continually. Can you imagine? That had to be an exciting time mm -hmm. when the presence of the Lord is coming back. And that verse does say, seek the Lord in his strength, yearn for and seek his face and in his presence continually. Yeah. And that's kind of broken down into four areas, which are the four subjects that you focus on. And you're getting ready to speak on the third area, which is face-to-face mm -hmm. -face with God, seeking yes. that relationship. And I use as a story, Zach, uh, Mary and Martha with mm. Jesus and the fact that uh, Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and to listen to him. Martha was busy with all of the uh, serving and the like. And Martha was not a bad person. She had a wonderful heart. She welcomed Jesus and the disciples anytime they came. She was also courageous in the fact that while others were seeking to, to kill Jesus, they were seeking to take his life. It was unpopular mm. to invite him into your home. And she did that. Yeah. But somehow she does, like many of us as Christians, we get so caught up in doing things for the Lord, we don't spend time with the Lord. Mm. And that's where Mary shined more. Yeah, well that visual of sitting at Jesus' feet and essentially affectionately looking up and just listening and, and really basking in the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord. I've heard it talked about uh, different spiritual temperaments as well, mm -hmm. that, that Martha and Mary, you're right, not bad, but they just weren't exactly maybe sharing the same temperament. And that's almost the contemplative, the sitting there and just admiring the Lord, yes. which is exactly, you kind of break it down into their different characteristics, right? Yeah, they, they, as I said, Martha was very courageous and the like, and mm -hmm. she was very dutiful and wanting to serve the Lord. And we all should be that way. The difference with Mary is that if you notice in the scripture, it says, Martha says, she left me. Hmm to go be with you, yeah. Lord. So she had a different perspective. Right. And we have to know that difference when it's time to leave the work and be with the right. Lord Jesus. She had a hunger for him. She hung on every word that he said, <laughs> and it made all the difference in her life. Right. So you talk about how it's not even really a choice. It's a requirement of yes. us to have this face-to-face -face yes. relationship. It is, and, it, and it, it leads up to the, the next sermon that I preach on this. It leads up to the connectedness that we must have with God. It is a requirement. It is a must in order to stay connected with God. We've got to have that one-on-one, face-to-face. -on -one, -face. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, even in, in thinking about this subject, and I think a lot of people maybe would share this, it can be scary at first because I think face-to-face, -face, I think up close and personal. Yes. I think vulnerable. Yes. I think <laughs> wide open. And those are a lot of scary All elements when you're things. talking about a relationship. But it, it's important, isn't it? It is. And here's the fact, that the fact that you're making yourself vulnerable to the Lord because we are less than holy. He is mm. holy. But his, his son died for this so that we could have that relationship. So the Bible tells us to come boldly. Now, yeah, we're humble in the whole process because yeah. after all, he is God. <laughs> but we come boldly in knowing that he treats us as a son or a daughter. Despite the frailties that we have, the, uh, the infirmities we have and the like, he loves us and wants us to be in his presence. We need to be in his presence because that's what will help us day to day to get through our mm -hmm. day. So let's talk about that specifically, tangibly. Um, maybe we find ourselves being on one side of the equation or the other, Mary or Martha, uh -huh. and maybe it's not our natural inclination to, to just sit there and, and sit at his feet. But how can we do that practically? How can we start to gain that relationship? In, in one part, I think using a good calendar to block out times mm. to be with the Lord, that's one thing. And also redirecting our mind, our thinking and our spirit to say, Lord, I've got 10 seconds. Sometimes I may have just seconds between clients in the office. Sure. And I'll take those seconds and just go directly up to heaven. I can do it just that quickly. And then I'm on to the next client. You know, the Lord will honor that. Hmm. He knows when we, when we have responsibilities that must be taken care of. And he doesn't say, how come you're not spending an hour with me when in fact you don't have an hour? But then there are other times where if we're a morning person, if we get up a little early to spend that time with him, it, 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 it blesses. If we're a night owl and we spend a little bit of that time at night with him, it blesses us. Sure, sure. And so once we develop that, you mentioned it kind of leads into your, your next topic, which we'll cover here soon. But it almost opens the door for that constant connection with God. 
Got and we it. can rely on him daily for our strength. And I Absolutely. guess that that's ultimately the goal, that we would be aligned with his spirit. That's right. And, and we were meant for that. The fact that God created a spirit, soul, and body, the spirit part of us is designed to stay connected. Well, if you would like to hear more on this topic, as always, you can tune in with Update with Bill Harris Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 1.30, right here on TV44. Thank you, Zach. So appreciative of Bill Harris' ministry. Next week, Zach has more from Bill as he wraps up his series based on 1 Chronicles 16. Excellent stuff there. We are almost out of time for the day. Remember, there's an event for everyone this weekend. We have the Parenting Conference at Grace Community Church Friday and Saturday. The WOW Women's Conference will make all women go wow with Jennifer <laughs> and also Hannah. And then Saturday, that's in Columbus Grove, Saturday. Unspoken will be Sunday in Pandora, Mark. Yeah, again, we want to say thank you for your assistance in this year's auction. An incredible $74,000 raised Saturday, September the 6th. Simply amazing. And finally, our scripture for the day, Proverbs 10, 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. As much as we enjoy sleeping in the fall, there is a time to get up and a time to get out and a time to make sure we're bringing in the crops in the fall time. Have a great week. Goodbye, everyone.